Hi, the first of many revision videos to help students of IB business management. There are three quantitative methods you'll be expected to use to undertake investment appraisal. The first one is the payback period. And that simply is look for the project which allows you to recover your money in the shortest amount of time. Now, example in front of you takes you through and shows you how to calculate it. Personally, I always recommend to students to put in the third column, recovery of investment. So you have a running total of how much is left at the end of each year to recover from the initial investment. And you can see in this example, end of year two, there's only 10,000 remaining. And in year three, there's 20,000 cash inflows to the business, net cash inflows, I should say. Uh, so really just 10 over 20 times 12 because you're looking to work out the number of months it will take during year three to recover that £10,000. And so that gives you there for six months. Uh, so the total payback is two years, six months. So have a look at the example, see if you can follow the logic of how it's calculated. Understand mechanics first, then move on to why you're actually basically undertaking the process. The key terminology is relatively straightforward. Investment appraisal is simply a tool which allows businesses to make decisions. Decisions on competing alternatives. You have a fixed amount of money, and these examples normally are replacing company cars for the business. There are a variety of different brands of cars out there. Which brand do you actually take? So investment appraisal will allow you to look at the quantity of the number and the quality of factors and add those two together that should therefore allow you to make the optimum decision on which investment to undertake so here moving on to work example two you've got two competing projects and simply just follow the process previously outlined and you can see that project a allows you to recover your money your initial investment in a shorter amount of time than project b so according to the theory project a on quantity of number basis is a project you should select. Now let's take your understanding a step further. Uh, evaluate what has gone on thus far and how you can actually criticize the payback period method. Yes, it's easy to calculate, simple to understand, but ignores profits after payback. If you work through the calculation here in the last two points in particular, you can see that the technique tells you to select project A because you can recoup your money in the shortest amount of time compared to project B. However, project B, if you add together all the net cash flows over the lifespan of the project, will be far more profitable. So therefore, for the sake of recouping your money in a shorter amount of time, you could actually miss out on a far more profitable investment. Second quantitative method, the average rate of return. And this is the formula given in the IB syllabus. Uh, break it down, it's simply ARR, total returns, I'll say that's all the cash flows added together, capital cost, initial investment, lifespan of the project, number of years, divide by your initial investment, and express the answer to percentage. Some students are confused by the idea of a rate of return. Think about if you put money in a bank and the bank pays you interest on your savings. That's simply the interest rate is the rate of return. So here you're looking for a gain or a loss on an investment. And all you do is basically express that gain or loss in terms of a percentage. And the bottom line with ARR is you select the project with the highest ARR figure. But you need to take into account the gain from an evaluation point of view. Some businesses will have minimum return on investment targets. So always carefully read exam questions. You know, if this is specified and you work out the ARR for one or two, three different projects, and you say select project A, for example, uh, but even project A still below the target investment, businesses will not normally touch an investment which does not reach their minimum threshold in terms of target. So realistically, that is the only factor that normally causes a problem. Criticisms of the method, it's involved in averaging. So the longer the time span of the project, 
uh, the longer you average over and therefore less reliable are the figures. Uh, simple worked example, just follow it through. Uh, make sure you're happy with the idea that obviously project B has a far higher uh, return, so therefore that's a project which should be selected on numerical quantitative basis. Moving on to the third quantitative method, discounted cash flow, net present value, MPV. Note, it's HL only this method. Now the primary reason, stroke advantage of using NPV is that it takes into account the time value of money, something which neither the payback period or ARR actually does. Now, time value of money is basically inflation, which is purchasing power. If you are undertaking an investment, you have to forecast returns on that investment. So if you are forecasting the investment will generate a net cash flow of £100,000 in five years' time, what £100,000 will buy in five years' time compared to today has to be adjusted because the purchasing power in five years' time, £100,000 will not buy you the same amount of goods or services that £100,000 does today. So you get involved in something called discounting, and this will become you know, far more obvious as I take you through an example. Worked example. Now, students again, for some reason, find this terribly difficult to start off with. It's simply a matter of laying out your data in columns so you've got the year, you've got the net cash flow, you've got discount factors, you've got net present value. Now, discount factors, okay, if there is a question in the examination, IB will provide you with a table of discount factors. You just have to find out which percentage discount factor to use, and it will be specified in the question. Or they may not even give you the tables, so they'll just basically print them in the exam paper. Here I'm using a 4% discount factor. So you take the net cash flows, you multiply them by the discount factor to rise, arrive at the net present value. So you invest £250,000. In one year's time, you generate a net cash flow okay, of £100,000. But what you're actually saying, you have to discount to reduce it. That £100,000 in 12 months time is only worth 96.15% of its value. So therefore, today, it's only worth 96.15, okay? Now work out it's pounds thousands. In two years time, you forecast you if this project will generate 120,000 pound, but what is that worth to you today? That's only worth 92.46% of its value. So what you actually do here, the calculation is multiply cash flow by the discount factor to arrive at net present value. A net present value is what are those future cash flows worth today? So you are, you are discounting, you are reducing the future cash flows. So £200,000 in four years' time is only worth 84.548% of its value today. Now all you simply have to do, cash flow multiplied by discount factor gives you MPV. Add the pool of the inflows, net cash flows, then subtract the outflow, that's the initial investment, you end up with an MPV. And again, this is all detailed in red, so go back over and work this through yourself. And what you're seeking, if you've got two, three different projects, calculate MPVs, you're looking for the project with the highest positive MPV. Now, what this actually means is, in today's terms, as it says here, yeah, 296972, okay? That is the profit, the value of the profit, this project. So if business spends 250,000, okay, it's gonna generate over the four years, okay, 296,972. So that is the value of the profit in today's terms. So the point of discounting is, you're making decision today, which is zero. So therefore, future cash flows, what are they worth to you today? If you make decision today, have the values of the cash flows today and work out the relative profits. So if it's positive, the MPV, it's a profit. If it's negative, you make a loss. If it's zero, you will basically break even on a project investment. Uh, theory wise, take a look through this yourself. It basically just goes over what I've just basically said for the previous slide, to be honest with you. Um, 
so it should re be relatively straightforward so let's draw all this together in terms of some evaluation points exam questions will always expect you to look at both quantitative and qualitative analysis of investment options this is all about decision making so you will have to balance number and non-number factors and arrive at a conclusion of which option is the best way forward for a business uh, look out for the fact payback ARR may suggest one option MPV another that's not an issue it's just the way you balance okay, it's the quality of your analysis and evaluation draw into the facts also MPV is the more reliable method it takes into account the time value of money also look for payback are you foregoing a project which over its lifespan could be more profitable than the one you're actually taking qualitative usually integrates knowledge of business an investment may be highly profitable but look at your stakeholders are you looking to place workers with technology how would that impact on your brand what about motivation levels of the workers left behind that could have an impact on your labor turnover as well those workers may not have lost their jobs at that point but they may think well it's only a matter of time so they leave also remember profitable investment link it to ethics it may be profitable to investing in certain products certain countries okay is that actually ethical and again take that back to your brand final item for you is a quick knowledge check and what you have here questions one to eight are the syllabus requirements for IB business management 3.8 so if you can answer questions one to eight you understand all the knowledge then it's just a matter of going back and practice 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 find your examination questions hope this has been useful it's on the YouTube channel make sure you keep your eyes open subscribe to our channel there will be more coming